Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to do a similar cube circuit like we did in the previous video, but instead of having B on the bottom here, we're going to have B on the top. So we want to find the equivalent resistance of a cube circuit like that with the two points in the opposite corners like that, diagonally across the entire cube. Again, we have to recognize the symmetry here, which means that we can actually collapse the circuit because basically from this perspective going this way or from this perspective going this way, this is basically a perfectly symmetric circuit along the two opposite sides of the cube, which means we can actually collapse the cube into a flat circuit. And what that means is we can, let's see, I need a red pen here. What that means is we can take this corner and collapse it onto this corner. We can take this corner, collapse onto this corner, so we make this into a flat circuit. So that opposite resistors combine, and you can think of them as being two resistors in parallel, and when you take two resistors in parallel that have the same resistance, and you combine them, then you get the equivalent resistance of half the resistance of the two resistors. So what that means is that this circuit will turn into a circuit that looks like this. So here we still have point A. We collapse those together, so you end up with something that looks like that. See here that these two collapse together, so that makes a resistor like that. And here, whoop, a little too far on that one. Like that, like that, like this, and then we have point B here. So what happened? Notice that these two points combined, that forms this point right there, these two points combined form that point right there. These two resistors combine to form this resistor. This one is still the same resistor as it was before. These two combine to form that resistor. These two combine to form that resistor. These two combine to form that resistor. And then this resistor is that one right there. So the ones that did not combine with any other resistor, they still had the same resistance value. That's these two right here. Notice that this resistor and this resistor are the combination of two resistors. So this is R divided by two, R divided by two. This, these two combine together to do vertical ones. So this becomes R divided by two. This is R divided by two and R divided by two. So these five remaining resistors are simply the collapse of two resistors on each other, same resistance, they act like parallel resistors. So the equivalent resistance is half the original resistance. Now we can simplify the circuit a little bit because you can see that these two resistors combined will form because they are in series. You can simply add them together so that this equivalent circuit will look like this. So this is point A. So point A is still here. So here we have a single resistor that combines to here. Here we have a single resistor. Here we, oh, we don't want to draw it that way. It looks a little funny that way. We want to draw that at an angle. Still have this one right there. So here we have a single resistor. And here these two combine to form a single resistor. And this is point B like that. So this one is these two combined. That would be 3 over 2R. This one is still the same one, R divided by 2. This one here is these two combined. That would be 3 over 2R. This one is still the same one, R divided by 2, and this one is still the same, R divided by 2. All right, so now we have a simplified flat circuit. However, if you notice that these three combined here form like a delta circuit. In other words, these three combined kind of look like this. If you want to redraw them, they look into this very typical shape that's called a delta circuit because it has a delta shape. So this would be uh, 3 over 2R for this one. This one right here would be R divided by 2, and this one right here would be R divided by 2. And the way we can solve that is we can make that into an equivalent delta circuit. Like that. So we have R1, R2, and R3, and if we connect that delta circuit, this would be 3. If we connect this delta circuit to the last two resistors there, so notice that this is the delta circuit that we're going to convert to a Y circuit and then when you attach a Y circuit to the last two resistors it's a lot easier to solve. And how do you find these two, three equivalent Y resistors from the delta circuit? Well I could say that R1 is equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors. So R1 right here, these are the two adjacent resistors, so that would be 3 over 2R multiplied times R over 2 
divided by the sum of the three resistors in the delta, that would be 3 over 2R plus R over 2 plus R over 2. When we multiply these together, we get 3 over 4R squared divided by 5 over 2R. These R's cancel out. This goes to a 2, that goes to a 1. So basically it would be 3 fifths, oh, there's still a 2 there. That would be 3 tenths R when you simplify that. Okay, so that means that we can change all three resistors from this delta circuit to a Y circuit using this very same technique. Let's find the other two resistors, R2, that would be equal to the product of these two right here, which is 3 over 2R, times R over 2, divided by the sum of the three resistors, 3 over 2R, plus R over 2, plus R over 2. The bottom will always be the same. The denominator will always be the same for all three equivalent resistors. And that notice that is exactly the same as what I had over there, so that will also be 3 over 10R. And finally, the third resistor is equal to, now to find the third resistor, we have to multiply the two adjacent resistors, so that's R over 2 times R over 2, divided by the sum, which will also be 5 over 2R. It's a line through there, so you see that, okay? And, okay, what will be the equivalent here? So that would be equal to R squared over 4 divided by 5 over 2R. And that cancels out with that one. And that would be equal to 1 tenth R. So there are the three equivalent Y resistors to replace the delta 3 resistors. So now what we can do is we can rewrite this, and let me use color to make it easier to see. So here's my A point. I now have the three resistors that form the Y circuit. Oop, there we go. And then we still have the last two resistors here, which I have not yet touched. And then they come together to the B point. And it doesn't really matter where I draw the B point. I can draw the B point up there or in the middle or at the bottom. That makes no difference. That's all equivalent. All right, now I can very easily join these together. Let's put in the values. For R1, we got 3 over 10R. For R2, we got 3 over 10R. And for R3, we got 1 over 10R. For this one, we still have R divided by 2. And for this one, we still have 3 over 2R. So now all we have to do is combine these two together. So the equivalent circuit, since they're in series, we can add them together. So we have A. Oop, we still have our single resistor there. Can't forget about that one. A single resistor here, which is 3 over 10R. And then that branches out. So these two combined, 3 over 10R, I have to convert that to something over 10, so that would be 5 over 10R plus 3 over 10R, that would be 8 over 10R. Notice, half R is the same as 5 over 10R plus 3 over 10R, that gives me 8 over 10R, and here we have 3 over 2R uh, converted to 15 over 10 plus 1, that would be 16 over 10R, and there would be point B. All right, now the last thing that's kind of hard is I need to combine those two. Well, let's simplify those first. This would be 4 fifths R, and this one would be 8 fifths R. So that's equal to 8 over 5 R. So now I have two resistors in parallel. I can find the equivalent resistance by using the product over the sum. And so to find the R parallel, that's equal to the product, which is 4 over 5 R times 8 over 5 R divided by the sum 4 over 5R plus 8 over 5R. So the product is 32 over 25R. And in the denominator would be 12 over 5R. And so that would be equal to 32 over 25 times, when you multiply, whoop, that would be R squared. So this cancels out that. And then we multiply times the inverse, which is 5 over 12 times R. This goes to 1, that goes to 5. Divided by 3, I get 4. Divided by, 
Oh, oh, four times I can do that. Oh, let's see, we can divide by two. Or actually we can divide by four. 12 divided by four is three. 32 divided by four is eight. And it looks like I have eight divided by eight. Oh no, eight divided by 15 R. There we go, eight divided by 15 R because I have to multiply here. So I get eight in the numerator, 15 in the denominator. That's eight over 15 R. So this equivalent circuit now becomes our first resistor, our second resistor. This is A, this is B. Notice I still have my 3 tenths R for the first resistor. And the second resistor becomes eight over 15 R. And since they're in series, I can add them together. I need a common denominator, which would be 30. That would be 9 over 30 plus 16 over 30. 9 plus 16 is 25 over 30. So that would be equivalent resistance of a single resistor from A to B of 20. Let's do this again. So 3 over 10 is the same as 9 over 30 R. And this would be the same as 16 over 30 R. 9 plus 16 is 25, so it would be 25 over 30R, which is the same as 5 over 6R. And that would be equivalent resistance of this cube circuit in the case where we take the endpoints to be here and diagonally across the other point on the top over here. Then the equivalent resistance of this resistor circuit is 5, 6 R. And again, quickly reviewing what we did, we end up collapsing a cube, which is a three-dimensional circuit, into a two-dimensional circuit because of the perfect symmetry. Wherever we collapse resistors together, that's like having two resistors in parallel. You collapse them together, you get half the resistance of the original two resistors. So you end up with five of those equivalent resistors that are now R over 2 instead of R. And then you take the delta to y conversion technique to turn into a circuit that is much easier solved like this and then you just go ahead and find the equivalent resistance that's how we do that